to discuss the topic security is essential, we are proud to have Mr. Cesar Broad. Hello, Mr. Cesar. How are you doing? Sir? Hello. Can you hear me well? Yes. Can you hear me well? Good. Excellent. Uh, I was very glad to, to be here a little bit earlier and see Angelo's presentation. I thought, uh, well, in terms of security, actually in terms of everything, but in terms of security, you are always learning. Uh, Jolly from LPI is also in here, and he knows that I was very concerned about the... the I'm not in my, in my office. Uh, my girlfriend is moving into another city, in a coastal site city in here, so I'm helping her move. And, you know, you think of internet today as something that you always it will always be available to you and when you are a security professional you need to be concerned that you should not uh, ever have a single point of failure and this is pretty much what i faced yesterday <laughs> i try to I, I i'm i'm really that type of uh, security guy that i'm really really concerned about things going wrong so uh, yesterday, I thought, well, maybe if something doesn't work today, uh, I would at least have a video uh, recorded so you guys could use uh, in any case. Well, it ended up that I had problems with my internet. Due to the problems with my internet, I could not get the whole video uploaded to, to YouTube. So the setting that I have today in here, I have this computer that I'm talking to you in one network and another computer actually also connected to the event uh, in another network using my cell phone as a backup. So uh, when you are a security professional, you really should take care of that kind of stuff. Like you, no single point of failure. And well, starting with that, I will share my presentation with you. And let's see uh, if I can continue in this computer. And if not, I'll just move into another one. But let's hope that it's going to work in here. Right. So let's see, share my screen, start sharing. And while you're preparing, um, Mr. Brad, before we finally give you the floor, we would like to remind our audience to share a live stream using our official hashtags. And this time, please include hashtag Linux Professional Institute. And this will be our official hashtag to, for this topic. Make sure to use all the hashtags mentioned when you share this event. You can just copy and paste those hashtags and winners will be announced after Mr. Caesar's presentation. So, yes, I think Mr. Excellent. Caesar is so, ready for his presentation. So, sir, we will now give you the floor. Okay, thank you very much. Can, uh, can I start now? Yes, uh, Mr. Brad, you can start now. Good, good. So I'm seeing my other computer in here that you, you guys are seeing my screen. So we are going to talk about the, the essentials of security and in, in Linux. And of course, as pretty much all of the security professionals today, um, I was going to say at some point in their lives, but I'm pretty sure that in pretty much all of the points in their lives, they will have to handle with uh, Linux system administration because Linux system administrations is, uh, Linux systems are the basis of cloud and computing today. And as you saw in the previous presentation, pretty much everything is in the cloud. Uh, thank you very much of, uh, for all of you at, uh, at HKNL at this event for inviting uh, the Linux Professional Institute. We do know that all of you attending those sessions are security experts, and yet I I, I think it's uh, always good to talk about the things that are um, important uh, in terms of the, the the basic stuff, starting with the the essentials, because you know uh, most of the time the the obvious things they they need to be repeated. So for most of you, I'm pretty sure that I'll be repeating a lot of stuff in here. So. Let's go. Uh, this is my basic agenda in here. Uh, I try to, I, I have the agenda and I have the slides because I tend to talk too much. And of course, security is a very, very big field. So um, although I, I have scripted the presentation, I have the agenda, I will probably end up uh, ending up talking more things than I planned, but I'll try to, to be on time 
actually I'll try to to save a little bit of my time because I, I really want to, to to listen to to your questions. So without further ado, let's just move on. Uh, everything that I mentioned in here, every content that, that, that I will explore, it is in this site, learning.lpi.org. This is the place where we keep all of the information regarding our certifications. Uh, as I mentioned, our certifications, well, before that, uh, most of you, I'm pretty sure, have been hearing the term DevOps for a little bit more than 10 years now. It all started in, in Belgium with uh, Patrick, I can't remember his last name, but that's, that's, not, that's not really important. Uh, we try now to, to understand that the ICT professional is someone that understands about development and also understands about operations. And within operations, we include security. And uh, from some time now, people uh, have been preferred to use the term DevSecOps to really stress how security is important. And security is so important for us at LPI that we cover security in all of our exams, starting from the essentials exams. We have now the Linux essentials exams. We are launching web development essentials. And soon we'll have also our own security essentials. Uh, this is uh, a security career path if you consider Linux uh, Professional Institute topics. And here I want to, to tell you something that is very, very important for us. A lot of people think of us as a certification body. And we are very proud and happy to, to hear people considering us a, a certification body. But the truth is that the mission of LPI uh, is not to certify people. The mission of LPI is actually make sure that the ecosystem of free knowledge, free technology is getting better and better through the people that are building this ecosystem. And uh, so we, we work uh, in several projects where we have people coming into the ICT market. Uh, we know we still need a lot of people in this market. So we work a lot with uh, inclusion, like bringing, uh, I'm very happy to see that we have a good amount of women participating in this event. So we work in the inclusion of women in the ICT market, but also in the uh, with minorities to get them in this market. Uh, myself, I'm working in a very big project with transgender people, and we were able, out of uh, almost 200 people, to have 87% of them employed, and we are actually following their career to see that uh, to, to make sure that the companies are not just uh, including people because they are required to. We want to make sure that those people are going to to follow their career. Of course, how do we fulfill our mission? By selling certifications, and our certifications are considered in, term, in the open source software market the best ones. And we are doing uh, quite well. Uh, and uh, I could uh, spend a lot of time talking about certifications. I'm not going to do that. Uh, just to tell you that the security career path in the way that LPI views that it starts with Linux Essentials. Soon we will have Security Essentials. Then you have the, the LPIC 1, the Linux Administrator Certification. LPIC 2, the Linux, what we call the Linux Engineer, but it's actually the, the Linux Networked uh, Administrator, because you, you will be handling Linux in a networked system. And then we have a special uh, specialization certification on enterprise security. Uh, oh, okay. I got a message that my internet connection is not very good. Hopefully, it's it's going to to start until the end. Uh, okay, so let's move on. What we are going to do in here, we are going to dive into into the terminal. So we we are going to work with some of those files and commands and look into that. And uh, some people 
tell us, well, why do you guys that uh, work with Linux, why do you always talk about the terminal? And the truth is that, and I, I know that a lot of people here will, come, will, will agree with me, is that a lot of times the only access that you have to your system to, to make your system secure, to recover from uh, a disaster is the terminal. And also when you are running a server in the cloud, you don't want to, to overload this server with a lot of stuff. And graphics, they take a lot of processing power. So usually a machine that you have in the internet, it's, uh, you, you're not going to install a lot of things. So you will always be able to rely on the terminal. Uh, it's also important to tell you that uh, Linux is a system that is secure by nature. It derives from uh, an older system, which is Unix, which already had this structure in here. So you see this uh, red barrier close to the top where we have the user space, where regular users do their stuff. And regular users, even if they can mess up their user area, they are not going to mess up the whole system because um, those spaces, they are please. really separated. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Mr. Uh, Brad. Yes? Yes. Our live on our Facebook and YouTube channel, uh, there has some, some technical difficulties, so just give us a moment. Sure, sure. All right, thank you. We're so I'll sorry wait to for you to... No, that's okay. All right, thank you. We'll let you know if it's if it's up on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Okay. Just give us a moment, Mr. Brad. Yes, sure.
right, so we are resharing this live. Let's give us a moment. All right, so thank you so much uh, for waiting, guys. Um, uh, we are now back and live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Once again, we have Mr. Cesar Pratt. Mr. Pratt. Okay, thank you. Should I repeat some slides or is it okay for me to continue from my spot? Uh, uh, could you please go back on your previous slides? Okay, from uh, I'll just do a very quick uh, uh, sort of overview of what I just said. Uh, right. So uh, it should, should not take a, a little bit, uh, not take too much time. That's okay. so thank you so much. Talk about, oh, you're welcome. So the idea here is to talk a little bit of the essentials in Linux. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to use all of the time that I have, so let's just move on. This is a, just a small agenda that I will try to follow. I tend to talk too much, so this is why I keep the agenda and the slides, so I'm not going to, to run away too much from, from the agenda. All of the material that, you, that, that I'm going to, to work in here comes from our learning portal, learning.lpi.org. Of course, this presentation is going to be available to you along with um, uh, a short version of the script. So if you want to reproduce this presentation, if you want to, to, to give some other people this presentation, feel free to do that. Uh, all of the, the information inside LPI, all of the information that we provide is actually free information. Uh, I want to to make a, a point regarding devops a professional an ict professional today should learn both about development and operations and this is something that we learn from the agile world and we want to stress that operations includes security development includes security so a lot of people prefer and i also prefer the term DevSecOps to really highlight how security is important. Linux Professional Institute, uh, the mission of the Linux Professional Institute is actually not to sell certifications. Uh, we actually, our mission is to make the ecosystem of free knowledge, of free technology, a learning. Uh, we do make a living out of our certification, so we are actually proud when people think we are, we are a certification body. Our certifications are recognized worldwide by their quality, and they are considered the best one in terms of open source. And we do worry about security, starting with our essential certification. So if you want to work uh, on security, we think that uh, the, the, the learning path passes through the topics of these certifications that you have in here. Starting from the essentials, we do already have Linux essentials. Soon, uh, sometime uh, this year, we'll have security essentials. Then you have the, the certification for the system administrator, which is LP1. <clears throat> then LPIC2 for the Linux engineer, which is actually uh, a system, a, a Linux system that you will, you will be taking care of that is connected to the network. And then we have our specialization, which is the LPIC3 enterprise security. All of our topics for our certifications, they are available on the web. Go to lpi.org or directly to wiki.lpi.org and you get all of the topics that you need to study. So even if you are not considering right now to get certified, it is important to know these topics because they are going to be important for your career. We will dive into the, the black screen, into the terminal, starting in a few slides. And uh, you must think that in all of the security professions that are in here, that I'm, I'm pretty sure know a lot more than I do, they know the importance of how of knowing how to know using the terminal. Because a lot of times, it is going to be the only thing that we, you will have to access the system. 
we don't want to overload our systems that are in the cloud. If you, if you saw the, the previous presentations, you know the, the importance about um, having our application secured in the cloud, and you don't want to overload your servers in the cloud with graphic stuff or unnecessary stuff that you don't need for a machine in there. We will be using the terminal a lot of times. Uh, the way Linux, uh, which derives from an older system, which is Unix, is structured, is that the user area is separated by a barrier, a red barrier that you can see uh, close to the top of this graphic. So you have your user space and you have your kernel space. Of course, a security professional will need to, to work also in the kernel space. So how do we overcome this barrier? It's through a structure called the sudo command. And what does sudo mean? Sudo means super user do. Super user do that thing for me. And the super user, of course, can do pretty much everything in your system. So uh, if, have your, if you have your, your Linux laptop with you, you can start trying some of the stuff that I'm proposing in here. Uh, of course, uh, all of those slides will be available for you along with a, a summarized version of, of that script. Um, Jolly, my friend from LPI, is also here in this event. So um, uh, he already has all of that material. I'm pretty sure that he will pass over to the organization. But anyway, if you, I'm, I'm not going to, to explain all of the commands in here because it's going to take a lot of time. So I am assuming that you are familiar with some commands. Uh, if you are not, uh, please, the reference for all of those, as I mentioned in the beginning, they are on learning.lpi.org, but also feel free to, to, to ask me questions. And even after the presentation ended, one of the, the last slides that I'm going to show is with our emails, myself and Jolly. So at any time, please, please feel free to ask, ask us questions even after the presentation. So if you do a cat to show the contents of slash etc slash shadow, as a regular user, you get the message permission denied. This is because you will need to ask sudo to do that. So if you ask super user, do that, that for me. Super sudo cat etc shadow. Now you get the contents of your files, of your file displayed in your, in your screen. And we will talk a little bit a little bit more about that by the end of our presentation. I'm trying to also recover some time from the previous presentations in here, because I'm always concerned about the people that are attend attending the, the presentation. They also don't have that much time. So uh, let's try to, to, to be clear, but also not to expend too much, spend too much time in here. So now, uh, how do not all of the users are able to use the sudo command? Of course, because if you, if you, Every time that you think of security, you give, you install the minimum amount of quantity of software that you are going to install in the server, because the more software you install, the more things you need to worry about the security of every individual piece of software. Uh, you have the, um, a minimum number of users, only the people that have to access to that, to that system, and also, privileged users, the ones that can actually do a super user, invoke super user commands, they need to be very few. So how do I know if I belong to the super user group or not? I use the command groups and you see the, the, third, um, the third word in here is sudo. This means that me, as the user Linux, I'm able to use the sudo command. Is this the only way? Uh, let's suppose I hire a consultant and I need to give uh, her uh, the access to the sudo commands. I can do that using the, oops, sorry, before that. Another way of knowing if I am in the sudo group 
is also using this command, cat etc group. ETC group is where the system stores the, 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 the groups in our system. And I pipe grab Linux. I just want to know which groups I belong to. And so you see here also in the third line that I belong to the sudo command, to the sudo group. So groups actually look into that and show the groups that I belong to. Actually, uh, the, the command groups is a small script that reads that and just pastes in the screen the, the, the first field of that. Uh, I'm not going, again, I'm not going to go too deep on that, but uh, just, just for you to know. So another way I can have a user being able to, to use the sudo command, being able to ask the super user to do stuff, is add that group in the etc sudoers. Um, and let me make a point. Everything that is under the folder etc on Linux is where you have all of your configuration. So uh, security administrators, they will uh, work a lot into the, the etc uh, folder. So here, uh, you this, is, this is a real file. So if you actually rename user x, with the, 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 I'm talking about the fourth line in here, with the name of a real user, and you uncomment this line, immediately that the user will be able to use sudo to give commands to, to your machine. Uh, you can edit files like this, files like etc sudoers, etc shadow, we'll soon look into etc password. Uh, I would not recommend that though, because uh, you know, when you are editing a file, even if you are a super user and you are uh, well-versed on that kind of stuff, you know, sometimes you, you make some typing errors, you add a, a semicolon, a column, somewhere where it's, it shouldn't be. So very easily you can lock your system out of your own access. So there are several commands that you use to, to change the etc shadow, etc password, uh, etc group. And here are some of the commands in here. Uh, if you want to know more about any command in Linux, you just type the name of the command, minus minus help, and you have a, you have a small cheat sheet, a small hints on how to use that command. If you need more information, you use man, the name of the command, and you have the manual pages for that command. And if you want more information, you can do info, the name of the command, and this is where you get the tutorial of that command. Uh, not all of those uh, things is, is, are going to work for all commands, but uh, most of the times, I would say 95% of the cases, they are work. They are going to work. And again, the information that I am uh, working here with you, it's all on learning.lpi.org. Uh, all of your system will have a password file and this etc passwd is where you have basic user information. So uh, the, the, the column will divide the, the, those fields. So you have in every single line in here, the name of the user, the password of the user, and you see there is an X in there. The X means that the password is not stored in this file, it's stored in another file, which is etc shadow that we are going to look again uh, very soon. Then you have the user ID and the group ID. Notice that the user ID for root is zero. So the only user that should have this user ID is zero. If you give this user ID to any other user, the user will become root. So never do this kind of thing. Then you have what we call the, the geckos. I'm not going too much into geckos, but it's if you look into, uh, well, any kind of Linux documentation, there, there, there's going to be several explanation on that. The truth is that this is the user field that was used by a printing system by General Electric 
long time ago where you would have the user information. So geckos means general electric something, but it's the, the, it's the extra user information. You will see uh, more in the last line, uh, you, you have the user Linux, then you have Linux, comma, comma, comma. You in there, uh, you could insert phone numbers, address, uh, the, the number of the, the user room, anything that you want. Then you have the home directory for that user. Usually in the last line, as you see, uh, for a regular user, you have a, a directory, a folder such as slash home, slash the name of the user. Uh, for the root user, it's an exception. You have the, the root directory under the, under the root directory, of course. And then you have the command interpreter that the user will use. You see, we have for root bin bash. Bash is the shell that the, we are going to use to access the system. Bash is actually what we see when we open the terminal. It's the interface between us and the system. And here you see, I only have for the user root and for the user Linux. All of the others have no login, meaning that all of these other users will not be able to log in into our system. I'll give you just one example, the user WW data, which is the, the user of the web server. So, we need to have a user to control the things that are being exposed into the internet. Uh, it uses as the home directory var www, where the, the web pages are stored, but this user cannot log in into the system. So another rule of thumb in terms of security, you might need to have different users to take care of other tasks of our system, such as you see here, mail, and the, 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 the mail system, of course, and syslog, the, the, the part of the systems that will log messages. And those all, all of those, they should never be able to log in into your system. Uh, let's take a look at the shadow. Uh, you see in the shadow, you have, again, the user. Because, of course, you need to have a key reference in both etc shadow and etc password and this is the name of the user then you have the password and look especially here uh in the linux user in the the, the almost the last line uh, it's just an excerpt in here so uh it is an encrypted password it's a very long one the the three points in here me means that this continue on so the password is going to be encrypted in this file. Then you have the, the last time that the, that the user had been logging, which is days counted from some date in 1917, which is a standard for Linux system. The minimum time that the password for that user will expire, the maximum time that the password will expire. Uh, so, Basically, when you create a user, if it is a user that should have uh, a limited existence, you should take care of that. Like, do not let users that will stay in your systems just for a while to be there forever. Uh, this is a, a security breach, like having users that are inactive. They are an invitation for people to try to get access to that users and have a privileged escalation meaning being able to use the sudo command and actually hack into your system. Uh, you have the, the inactive flag that will tell for how much time that user, that user has been inactive. So from time to time, uh, for it, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's very nice to look into that and see if you have users that have not been logging into the system for a long time and actually check if they are using the system and the expiration date. So you can set a user to expire in a specific date. Uh, min, minimum and maximum date, it's regarding to, 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 to ask them to change their password. And again, all of this information is in, in learning.lpi.org. Uh, a bit of file permissions and I want to give you time to ask me questions. So uh, 
I'm not going to expand that much in that. But if you try as a regular user to do a get on ETC password, you'll be able to read the contents. As we saw in the beginning of that presentation, if you want to do the same kind of thing on ETC Shadow, you won't be able to do that. You get a uh, permission error. Look at the letters that you have to the right of the, the description of the, the long description of the files in here. LS list your files and directory minus L will give you the long listing. So you have read, write, dash, read, dash, dash, read, dash, dash. So for ETC password, the user that owns that file, in this case root, will be able to read and write to that file. The group, the, the users that belong to the root group will be able to only to read that file. And the others, everyone that's able to get access to your system will be able to read. If you look in the, the line for ETC Shadow, you will have the pretty much the same thing, but for the others, for everyone else that have access to your system, you have dash, 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 meaning nobody else will be able even to, to read or write into that system. This is, some, this is a concept that is very important for people that work with security. You should uh, only give permissions needed for people that need these permissions. The command that will handle these permissions is the, the command uh, chmod. But we are not going, of course, to, if you, we are learning about that, we are not going to... to to play with those systems files. So we are going to, to create a file of our own. So the file that I created here is a file called test.sh. And another important thing, uh, Linux doesn't care about the extension that you give to your files. The extension in a Linux system is something for you to know what kind of file is that. Linux will always look into the contents of the file to see what kind of file is there. So I could have called this test.hknl that for Linux, it would be the same. So this is just a file that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to work with some very few examples. It has the standard, the standard permissions for, remember, UGO, user group owner. In this case, user is Linux and group is Linux. Uh, that you can see here in the last line of the, this screen. So the user can read and write. The others in the group Linux can read and write. And everyone else that has access to the system can just read. The way I change the modification. So the, in this example, I do not want anyone in my group to read or write into my file. So I do chmod g for group minus read and write test.sh, my file. So if I, if I do an ls minus l again into that file, now I see that myself, the user Linux can read and write. My group cannot do anything. I only have dashes in there and I still have everyone that can access to my system to be able to read that file. If I do not want anyone in my system to read my file, I do chmod o for others, for everyone else, minus r, minus read, won't be able to read the name of the file again. And now if I check with the ls minus l command, I'll see that only my user can read and write. No one else can do anything else in my group or everyone else that has access to the system. Okay, now I want people in my group to be able to read and execute my file. And I want myself to be able to read, write, and execute my file. I'm doing something different. I'm now working the octal mode of the ch mode command. And uh, believe me, this is the kind of command, this, the, the octal mode is the one that most security people will use because they know that read, write, and execute, R, R W, and X, they are positions for bit they're turned on or turned off. So they are zero or one. And X 
is actually the first position. So it's the zero position. Uh, two elevated to zero is one um, for, for the, the right. X is in the second position. So it is in the position number one. So two elevated to one is two. And two elevated to two is four. So if I want to give all of the permissions, I will add the, the numbers for the positions, which are one, two, and four. So read is four, write is two, X is one. So if I want to give all of the permissions, I just say seven. In this case, I want to give read and execute permission. So read is four, X is one, four and one is five. So seven, five, and for the others, I don't want to give any permission, so it's zero. I know it seems a little bit complicated, but as it is widely used, it is part of the Linux essential certification. So you see, uh, it is essential for someone that is working with security. Uh, so when you go into uh, our uh, Linux Essentials topics, the topic five will handle with all of that stuff. So everything that I said to you in here is covered in there, in a very in-depth, you'll be able to learn all of that stuff. And while teaching people how to work with security in Linux, I found out that this octal mode for security is something that uh, people take some time to learn. So I have created, uh, this is the URL, for something for you to play, uh, broadtech.com slash CH moderator. Uh, here you can exercise the permissions that you have for your user, for your group, for others, just by clicking if the user should read or write stuff, and you get the, the CH mode octal equivalent command at the end. Uh, you can just go to this URL, you can do a file copy to yourself this spreadsheet, and so you'll be able to, to, to tweak with it uh, a little bit and get to know better about your all of your security stuff. Uh, now, uh, I'm open for questions, and of course, I would leave this slide a little bit in here so you can make a note of my, my email, and also Jolly, which is my friend that is responsible for the the whole Asia Pacific uh, region. Uh, he, he will be more directly in contact with you, but virtually uh, both of us will be able to, to answer your questions. Uh, I know, especially for those that are new to security, new to Linux, there was quite a lot of content. And again, the slides along with the script uh, for this presentation is going to be available for you. And so by saying that, I'll just uh, end my presentation here and I'll let the organizers be back to you. And okay, I'm here for questions. All right, thank you so much for that, um, Mr. Brad. We would like to ask you. you to stay for a while for uh, our question and answer portion. So for our participants, you may drop your questions in the comment section of our social media platform. And by the way, we're actually promoting open source, uh, open source tools. We're also partner with uh, Linux Professional Institute. I believe we actually have a question. And uh, this comes from Yel Bakani. Hi, sir. May I know what is the advantage of Linux over Windows in terms of security? Uh, I would say that the as I as I mentioned in that slide with the 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 the, the way that Linux is structured, where you have the 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 user space.